Pipe Dope asks, can we use other fruit other than tomato in the pizza sauce like pineapple tomato sauce? Yeah, I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't substitute whatever you want for a sauce. Pineapple would be pretty good because, you know, if you compare it to a tomato sauce, it's got acidity, it's got sweetness. You don't really have that savory component. Tomatoes have an umami to them that I don't think pineapples do, but you could add other things to the pineapple sauce. Like you could potentially add maybe some soy sauce or coconut aminos to bring up that umami. But yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't. You could do a lot of stuff. I mean, people do creams. You know, creams are all the rage. Uh, Pipe Dope then goes on to ask, could you do a nice strawberry, arugula, and tomato sauce? Uh, look, man, I think you're on the right track. And I think you're trying to ask for my approval, but you don't need it, sir. You are definitely on the right track, and you should try it. Unless you're asking me for, asking for me to try it. In which case, not that I wouldn't, but I'm on a very kind of particular quest with this New York style. Sebas Galamez. Flavor request, gotta skip that. Uh, Neh237 says, could you or would you have a calorie estimate for your ice cream? I don't, as long as I don't have to, legally, I'm not gonna. We do so many different flavors, it would be a total pain in the ass, a nightmare to come up with a nutritional label for every single flavor that we do. But I can tell you this much, it's a 16% butterfat ice cream and it's probably going to be very similar to a uh, Ben & Jerry's, considering all the mixins you put in there and the super premium quality style. I would definitely try and baseline it off of a Ben & Jerry's. All right, we're going to skip that one. Jessica Allegar says, when are you going to open up a pizza shop? So... I don't see it in any near future. It would be also kind of a shame if I did. I'm definitely not gonna do it here in Philly just because of the concentration of pizza. And at that point, you really are bringing sand to the beach. But I do have this pipe dream, this vision of moving to the Catskills and opening up a shop where I do espressos on my lever machine. We do soft serve and we do pizza. A really nice, tight concept Nice little shop, beautifully done, out in the Catskills. Wow. That would be probably the only context in which I would do pizza, and it would be far away from Philly. Um, you know, one thing that can happen, and unfortunately it happened with ice cream, is my hobby turned into a career. I don't really have the same love affair with ice cream anymore, and I would hate for that to happen to pizza. I love working with dough. Dough's a lot of fun. Pizza's incredible. The cool thing about pizza is the anticipation like you in in so many different stages right you're making the dough and then you're waiting for the fermentation to happen and when it does successfully it's a surprise it's awesome and then when you go to build your pizza and it's on the peel is it going to stick or is it going to slide right off that's another surprise and then lastly your bake when that thing comes out and it's fucking perfect it's got all the coloration and it's sizzling it smells great man it's an amazing feeling. Sunday. I hear you. I hear you. When um, Shannon Murgit says, when's Espresso Friday coming back? Uh, if this dog knocks over the tripod. Let me go grab her. Hold on. Espresso Friday. Espresso Friday was a really fun concept. Sit down. Sit down. Good girl. Fun concept, but, you know, it just didn't catch enough momentum. And it's probably the fact that it was only on Friday. It's kind of difficult. Um, I didn't stick with it long enough just because I got busy. That was an off-season thing. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Good girl. That was an off-season thing, and then the season happened, and I got insanely busy, and I just couldn't commit Fridays. I had to go out to the dairy to pick up dairy mix, 
Fridays are just a very busy logistical day, getting ready for the weekend, and I could not use my mornings to make espresso. Uh, maybe 25, 50 espressos max, just wasn't gonna cut it. But I love the idea, and I don't know. Never say never, but it's the second time I tried it, and it didn't really work out that great. I think espresso needs to be put like in its own con like in its own concept. You know, it's really got to be a cafe. It can't just be this ice cream shop that has like a random espresso machine and a guy making espresso. It just can't be that. Hey, come here. Sit down. Stay. Stay. Good girl. Cousin John Seven, where do you get your flavor inspiration from? Good question. You know, I tell people, like, some people have a jump shot, right? I don't have a jump shot. I have creativity. And that's something that comes naturally to me. So coming up with flavors, they just, it's like a stream of consciousness thing. It's just like always there. And the more you work with things, the bigger you build up your bank and you just start doing different permutations of things. I would say a single source of inspiration are probably just like the treats that we know and love growing up. Um, hey, hey, where do you want to go? You're really, you're interrupting me here. You're really interrupting me here. Okay. Like oatmeal cream pies or Snickers, um, you know, candies, things of that nature. That's like a single source of inspiration, but for the most part, it's really just like, oh, it's also topical. Like if something comes up in the news or if like, for example, <laughs> this happens a lot. People send a, try to see, send a DM to somebody else in response to, so basically what happens is I share one nine hundred story with you. You respond thinking that you're responding to me, but you're responding to one nine hundred. That happens a lot, and more often than not, they're talking shit. And this one guy responded to his girlfriend, but it was actually me. That's a shit-ass flavor. So, what did I do? I came up with the best flavor I possibly could, and I called it shit-ass flavor. So, just stuff like that. MX Sussman, favorite roaster in Philly. You know, I don't really like to play the favorites game. Um... There is no one favorite of mine of anything that I'm sure I could think of something, but like with stuff like that, where it's so, where there's so much variety, there's no single favorite. It's everybody that I drink coffee from or buy coffee from excels in a certain arena and I'm buying it because I'm trying to satisfy that particular itch at that particular time. So it's, you know, all the... There's a few in Philly, but more and more I've been kind of going outside the city. I've been drinking a lot of Italian-style dark roasts, and I really like this one called Malabar Gold. And it's not from here. I don't know where they roast, but that's my style of, of coffee, especially when I'm brewing espresso. If I'm brewing pour-over like we did today, then I like some of the more experimental stuff. Hey, come here. Come on. Up here. Maybe from Brandywine Roasters, they do some pretty cool co-ferments. Um, yeah, but there's no single favorite in Philly. And I, I don't really want to call anybody out by name because, God forbid, I, I miss somebody. I don't want to make them feel bad. Jewelry Mumrade. What's up with all the fluff? All right, so those fluff containers on top of my cabinets, back when I was making ice cream in my apartment and making it by hand, it was easy to put fluff in the ice cream. You could pipe it in with a pastry bag and I would use fluff in a lot of my pints. So I kept all the containers, hundreds of them, thinking that I was gonna make like a really cool art installation or if i ever had a retail spot i was going to make the whole window uh the whole window just a stack a whole wall 
of those containers and then light them from behind and then at night it would it would light up so that never really happened and then I decided to put them on top of my cabinets and each one of those has an LED light in it and they light up it's kind of cool because the tops cast like an orange glow on the ceiling and then the white containers cast like a nice white it's really cool if I can dig up a picture I will try and do that for you uh s nirenberg favorite slice in philly or nyc again i don't like to play the favorites game especially not with pizza um because there's just everyone's pretty much doing their own thing everyone that's the great thing about philly is like yeah you have like a lot of people there's a high concentration and saturation of concepts but everyone's kind of sticking to their own lane in New York just because of the density. There's a ton of overlap. But in Philly, you ha really have people sticking to their thing, their style. My current style of pizza that I like is a New York style. Thin, 16-inch or larger, nice crisp bottom. And, you know, maybe doing something fun with the fermentation so it's like more of an artisan so I'm not going to call anybody out by name, but I eat everybody's pizza pretty much for the most part and not one more than the other. I'm also making a lot of my own pizza. I will say my favorite in New York because I don't really know anybody, so I don't feel bad not mentioning somebody, but the industry fucks. I really like the industry. All right, Clark Ham 3. Love the grass-fed dairy. Is there a list somewhere of the additive ingredients that you use? Uh, our flavor, all of our labels on the pints have ingredients listed in them. So the first line says base, and that'll show you what's in the base. It's a very clean label. You've got, let's see if I can list them off the top of my head. You've got milk, cream, sugar, uh, non-fat, dry milk, whey, tapioca starch, guar gum, locust bean gum, and salt. It's a great, great mix. Dennis is every day. Denise every day. Dennis every day. Dennis E every day. Do you have your eyes on any vehicle acquisitions at the moment? As a matter of fact, I do. So I'm into cars, been collecting cars for a little bit. I'm selling one that I'm probably going to take a bath on, but just because of how much money I've put into making it right, I bought what I thought was a good example of a 1979 280SL R107. And when I got it, it had some problems. So I spent like a year and a half and a lot of money making it right, making it drive like a Mercedes. So it's gonna return me a good amount of money, but I'm gonna take a loss, I think. I was looking at some Porsches, some air-cooled Porsches. I kinda wanna get into a 3.2 Carrera. I saw two this week, but what the guy was asking and there was no vehicle history, but it was a clean car. And the fact that he w didn't want me to get a PPI, I had to walk. I can't take that risk. I don't have deep enough pockets to get involved in a Project 911, an air-cooled 911. And plus, you know, these cars, it doesn't matter how many miles, it's age and rubber, rubber dries out. There's rubber all over the suspension, and these cars drive really nice when they have good suspension. And redoing suspension on any car is like minimum 10 grand. Hey, can you please go get comfortable somewhere, please? So antsy. Let's try this. So, yeah. I'm looking to consolidate. I'm looking to sell a bunch of stuff. I've got a lot of photography equipment, processing equipment, 
espresso machines. I'm trying to downsize and I'm trying to parlay all that into a, uh, a G50 3.2 Carrera. I cannot pronounce any of these uh, screen names. D. Tar Akoff. Do you respect your ice cream sandwich customers? You greet Scoopies and Softies only. Yes. Look, I respect everybody. I respect all of my customers. And you are not just a ice cream and ice cream sandwich customer. You're a one nine hundred customer, and therefore I respect you a lot. Sorry, the greeting is what it is. It's been that way for like five years, and I can't change it. But I respect you. Izzy Pinto 5. Are you, uh, we already answered that one. Joe Pev. Fuck, Mary kill. Softy, scoops, or ice cream sandwich. Uh, this one is an easy one for me. We are going to F soft serve we are going to no we're going to f sandwiches we're going to marry soft serve and we're going to kill scoops scoops are like the bane of our existence w wom pilly ah flavor suggestion schlags 26 can you mix ice directly into the dough to keep it cold or would this mess things up? No, you ac absolutely can. You want to do that at the end of your mix. So basically, as I've seen it, I'm, I'm no expert here, but the way that I do it is at the end of my mix, I will reserve 15% of my water in ice. And if it's too hot, I'll add it in. A lot of shops will do this when it's summertime and it's really hot in the shop. But yeah, you mix it in, it'll melt, and it will incorporate into a finished dough, into a dough that's reached medium or full gluten development. I hope I didn't say that with too much authority, okay? No expert, just a hobbyist. But that's what I, that's what I have done. That's what I did today. Um, Olivia Menning, can you talk about what sparked your interest in the ice cream biz? Well, back in the day, I would say 2018, 2016, I started an underground restaurant out of my apartment, and I focused on making savory food, but I needed a dessert, so I would make ice cream, and the ice cream was simply just to send out as a dessert, but gained a lot, a lot of popularity. I really took it seriously. People loved the ice cream. And I figured I would make vanilla ice cream for Thanksgiving in pints and do a pre-order. And I would offer it to the people that were on the email list for the supper club. Oh, Sunday. You are very close to that tripod. Uh, yeah. And it went really well. We sold like 150 pints of ice cream in three minutes. It took me a long time to make that because I was using a tabletop ice cream machine would make like two pints every 25 minutes and then you know i the the supper club kind of became a self-sustaining thing come on up here come on because i had all these guest chefs cooking so i didn't have to cook anymore i was basically just setting it up and, and being the host so it freed up a little bit of my time and I started offering different flavors of pints on a pre-order basis. And I would sell them out of the apartment, you know, pre-order, come pick up on Friday sort of thing. And I saw a lot more scalability and sustainability in that avenue than I did the underground restaurant. And so that's kind of where that started. It's a pretty long story, a lot of nuance, but I want to I wanna be charitable with my time here. So we can get to all of these questions. We could probably dig dig back into that one at a later time. Uh, that's nice of you, Laurel in Philly. Any plans for opening up a spot in Queen Village or South Philly? I I don't think so. This is the end of me opening up retail locations. It's 
it's a lot and it's very stressful and I don't love it. I don't love opening up retail. I don't love the amount of money it costs and um, the overhead. It's a lot. I'm not, I'm not like an operator. You know, I'm not a restaurant operator. I don't know how to do this. I am building the airplane as we're flying. So I don't have a very scalable model. If we were to open up any more, what I would do is just make a soft serve franchise model or a license deal. And then other operators can take the soft serve business and open up their shops. I am not opening up any more retail. Jilly Mayer, what's your favorite soft serve flavor you have made? Man, favorite. I could not tell you. See, soft serve is interesting because it's like, it's the greatest hits. I have taken everything that I've learned from hard ice cream and the 500 and some odd flavors that we've made, seen what has been really successful and tastes really good, and turned that into soft serve. So they're really kind of like all of my favorites. Um, I'm so sorry. I do. I can't think of one off the top of my head that would be my favorite. I'm, I'm sorry. You got me there. Okay. That seems to be all of the questions. Oh, we got a few more. We got a few more here. Infragible. Sneak peek at fun idea flavors you're cooking up as... Sneak peek at fun ideas slash flavors you're cooking up as ice cream off-season... As the ice cream off-season approaches. Well, these are very deep flavors, fall flavors, spices, salted caramels, um, vanillas, rums, pardon me. I don't plan. I'm not a planner. And I certainly don't plan my flavors. They are made up the day we make them, pretty much. Or the week. Ah, spider. Sunday. Can we get uh, good egg photos? Can we get mommies and poppies, scoopies and softies merch? I'm a big fan. I've thought about it and I have some concepts on my computer that I've made, maybe for holidays. Maybe we'll come out, something, come out with something for the holidays. All right, thank you for trail talk.